This video will discuss political culture and public opinion in American government. Every single country has a political culture. A political culture is basically wide shared, widely shared beliefs, values, and norms concerning the way political and economic life ought to be carried out. It can, there are basically two types of political cultures. A conflictual political culture is one in which different groups or subcultures clash with one another, whereas a consensual political culture experiences much less conflict. Now, no matter how broadly the consensus is held, even in a consensual political culture, there is always going to be diversity and there's, also, there's always going to be a certain degree of conflict among the people. Um, Americans have a, a set of shared beliefs, but the conflict occurs on how these values should be implemented, not on the basic values themselves. Uh, the values themselves of that make the American political culture are strongly grounded in the 18th century Enlightenment philosophy that so heavily influenced the Founding Fathers and is found throughout the Constitution. There are five core values of American political culture that you should be aware of for the AP Gov exam. Liberty, which was one of the natural rights mentioned in the Constitution. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Equality is the second one that you should be aware of. Equal opportunity and equal treatment is very important in American government. And in the Constitution, it says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The third one that you should be familiar with is individualism. Um, American government and American history always prides the individual. And the fourth one you should be familiar with is democracy, government based on the consent of the governed. And the last one you should be familiar with is rule of law. Government is based on law applied equally, impartially, and justly. Now, in the, in the late 1800s, with the onset of the Industrial Revolution, capitalism and free enterprise became part of the political culture as well. Capitalism is wealth based on money and or other capital goods, whereas free enterprise is economic competition without government restraint. Um, capitalism and free enterprise, basically, they reinforce the value of individualism I mentioned earlier. However, in the late 1800s, uh, the, the new values conflicted with the value of equality. For example, monopolies caused many people to question the equality of opportunity. So, the resolution to this unequal treatment was another value being added to ensure fair treatment in the marketplace, and that value was called, and I quote, promotion of general welfare, end quote. Um, although the preamble to the Constitution states that promotion of the general welfare is a major purpose of government, the meaning of that value was really transformed during the 1930s when the Great Depression brought about the, the near collapse of capitalism. FDR's New Deal program was an affirmation of the government's responsibility for the welfare of its people. Uh, FDR basically he outlined the second bill of rights and they reflected his firm commitment to economic security and and independence by asserting everyone's right to a job food clothing a decent home adequate adequate medical care and and the right to a good education mistrust in the government has been has been high since the 1960s because of certain things like the watergate scandal and the vietnam war uh since the government since the government has been proven to be corrupt in the past by things like the watergate scandal people are very untrusty and very tend to, basically tend to mistrust the government um, because of the mistrust in government, political efficacy has dropped significantly. There are two types of efficacy you, you should be familiar with. One is internal efficacy, which is the ability to understand and take part in political affairs. And then there's external efficacy, which is the belief of the individual that government will respond to his or her personal needs or beliefs. Um, internal FSC has remained pretty much the same, but since the 1960s with things like the Watergate scandal, external FSC has dropped a lot. Uh, this is also another reason why incumbent presidents are much less likely to get re-elected. Um, despite the fact that Americans share this broad cultural and political values, conflict has increased throughout 
the throughout the 20th century, especially since the mid 1900s, the country has really been split on explosive political issues like abortion, gay rights, drug use, school prayer, terrorism, and U.S. and world affairs. Now that pretty much takes care of that, and now let's move on to something called public opinion. Because public opinion in American government is very important. Uh, public opinion is basically the distribution of individual attitudes about a particular issue, candidate, or political institution. It's basically the public's thoughts and opinions. Uh, people are often not informed about the issues and may comment on topics they know very little about. Public, therefore, public opinion polls must be constructed and, and executed very carefully in order to accurately reflect the attitudes of the American public. Polls generally start when someone wants a political question to be answered. For example, a, can a candidate running for Senate or a candidate running for the House of Representatives, they might wonder, you know, what do people in the district really need? So they might create a poll, but they have to be careful to make that poll, the wording of that poll should be very exact because often they can be misleading and people are often just uninformed and provide wrong answers or straight up lie. Uh, pollsters follow, therefore, pollsters follow several important principles when gathering accurate statistics. Uh, some of these principles that they follow are representative sample, Respondents knowledge, careful and, and objective wording, cost efficiency versus accuracy, and variances between samples. Um, a representative sample is basically when the sample of those interviewed are, rep are representative of the entire population. The most common type of sampling is random sampling. The pollster makes a list of groups using criteria like religion, age, ethnic and racial groups, gender and religion. And then from these groups, people are basically randomly selected for interviews. And then the information from, the, from those interviews is taken and made into a poll. Respondents' knowledge is basically people...